What's up, Bruin peeps? We're back and we are going to be bottling up our Innkeeper Ale. Um, we already got some of our bottles. We got eight bottles in our bucket already. And we're going to get these last four in here. We're going to go ahead and sanitize 12, even though we're not going to probably get 12 out of this. We'll probably get around 10. We got an iodine solution here that we're sanitizing in. We already got our filling tube sanitized. We got our fizz drops ready and our capper ready. And we already got our uh, bottle caps in the sanitizer as well. Got our fermenter sitting here. It's been sitting for a few minutes now. That's to not disturb it. It looks pretty clear. So uh, we're gonna start here in a moment. We're gonna let these soak for about five minutes and then uh, we'll go ahead and get our tube, our filling tube connected and start transferring our uh, beer into our bottles. And in the meantime, we're enjoying a Chinook IPA that we brewed a few months ago. Good beer. All right, we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, it's been about five minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and get out our tube, drain all the solution out of it. So got a little more in there. There's not a good and a bad way to do this. Usually the easiest way is just to press your tip and hold it up high. There we go. This sometimes can be tricky, but once you put it on your fermenter a few times, it gets a little easier. And this one's been on here quite a few times, as you can tell. All right, I'm just gonna set the tube up here, kind of out of the way. I'm gonna remove our airlock, because we don't need that in here right now. And just set it off to the side. And uh, we'll go ahead and start pulling our bottles out. bottles to get out of here. Once we get all these out, we'll let them air dry for a couple of minutes. They don't really have to do that, but the sanitizer is pretty inert. It's not going to harm you in any way. And two more to go. doing uh, another batch so I got all my caps in here mixed up for two batches so I'm gonna have to uh, sort out <laughs> my caps figure out which ones I'm gonna use bottling beer is pretty easy compared to everything else you do Unless you're bottling like a five or a 10 gallon batch of it and it starts becoming work, but these little one gallon batches, it's really the best way to go. Right, so I'm gonna be using these Northern Brewer caps that got the little red arrow on them. I think I got them all out. I think everything else is just black. Black's gonna go on my next batch. All right, so got all of our caps out. Uh, we're gonna give this a few minutes, just let it air dry for a couple of minutes, and then we're gonna start transferring. Um, we gotta put our fizz drops in, so I'll go ahead and do that first, but uh, we'll be back in a minute here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting our fizz drops in. And I'm only gonna do 10 of these, I'm gonna leave two off to the side because I do not think we will get 12. And if we do, I'll put fizz drops in them. But I don't, don't believe we'll get that many. 
I don't know, normally I have several I have to force down into the uh, bottle. These are not, not that, like that. So I got these two here. I'm just gonna set these two off to the side. And uh, we'll start with this one here. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, turn our spigot on. And let the flow and begin. Might have a little air in there for the first couple of seconds, but once you get it, once you uh, get the flow going, and I, I'm using a five gallon bucket just to elevate mine high enough to get uh, flow into my bottle. Man, I, I don't know. I may not even get 10 out of this. This might be a nine bottle patch. Can't really smell this uh, breeze. I can smell them. This one doesn't have much of a smell to it. I mean, it's not, not really a hoppy beer, so I'm going to be interested to see how it tastes once we uh, crack it open in two weeks. I did let this one ferment a little longer than normal. Uh, normally, I would only ferment a batch like this for two weeks, like the instructions say. But uh, unfortunately, I was traveling and wasn't able to do that. And this set in a fermenter for a few more days, about five or six more days. Uh, I've had those situations where unexpectedly I wasn't able to bottle it like uh, when I was supposed to, and it didn't really affect anything. Actually, I, I think the beer tasted a little better, actually. It may give it a little more time to age and uh, you know finish fermenting. It may be a little bit of fermenting left there that's going on those last couple of days it's not much because most of the uh, yeast have ate up all the nutrients and uh, the uh, words so you don't really have much going on that's why you're putting the fizz drops the fizz drops are basically just sugar uh, they just give uh, they get the yeast something to uh, eat again basically and uh, get some going again. So when you bottle, you actually want to treat these the same way you would treat your fermenter. Um, what I do, I save all my boxes that the bottles originally come in, and I put them back in the box, close the box up, and then I set it in a room in the house that's not dark, uh, and just let, let it sit there, you know, room temperature for two weeks. And uh, I'll crack one open, you know, test it out. I'll throw it in the fridge, let it get cold, uh, crack one open. And uh, sometimes they don't uh, carbonate as fast. So I recommend, I do recommend doing that. I do recommend uh, before you, you know, just two weeks out without checking one, transferring them on the fridge and killing the yeast. I, I, I would recommend, you know, trying one and then if it's good, put the rest in the fridge. I, I normally don't put mine in the fridge any, anyways till I'm ready to drink them. And uh, I bottle so much beer that I just store them in the boxes and at room temperature. And uh, yeah, I just refrigerate them maybe a week or two before I plan to drink them. So I just like to, I feel like it if you do that, I feel like it ages the beer a little bit more. It gives it a little bit more of a, uh, I don't know, I don't know, richer taste. I think the flavors come through a little stronger. Maybe it's just me, but <laughs> maybe it's all in my head. But I think there is some aging that goes on in the bottle. And uh, I really like uh, some of the beers that I've left in the bottle three or four months before drinking them actually have tasted really good. So there may be something to that. I'm no expert. <laughs> so. The only thing I'm an expert at is drinking them. 
I am an expert at that. I have many years of experience. All right, so we are we are down to number seven, and we're already at the point where we're probably going to have to tilt the fermenter here in a minute. I've been talking so much and haven't been paying attention, but uh, if I had to guess, I'd say we're only going to get nine bottles out of this. I'm thinking that's it, unfortunately. Yep, we're only gonna get nine. So my next batch that I'm doing, I'll just use that bottle that has the fizz drop in it. I'm not feeling these quite as high as I normally would too. I, I was trying not to uh, get too crazy. I, I like to fill them all the way up and pull the filler out, but sometimes uh, if you don't, if you're trying to make it stretch, we're already at the point now. Once you start getting air, it's time to, uh, you know, and I, I try not to suck out everything. And now, like I said, this, this is gonna be nine bottles and that's it. If I get that, gosh, it's gonna be pushing it for nine. And believe it or not, I, I brewed this with a gallon and a half of water a gallon and a half. So I'm not sure, uh, I mean, I am really not sure what folks are getting when they brew with uh, a gallon and a quarter. They're not getting nine or 10 bottles, I can tell you that. They're probably getting more like seven, seven or eight. If this brew wasn't as clear as it was, I wouldn't even try to get this last bottle here, but uh, it's pretty clear actually, and I didn't disturb it too bad, but this is definitely gonna be the last one. I might have enough in here. I could go back and fill some of the other ones up a little more. All right, so we got about as much as we were gonna be able to get out of that. Uh, and only got nine bottles, so you can see that, uh, you know, there's no guarantee you're going to get a dozen for sure. All right, so we got our fizz drops in. Let's start capping. It's my favorite part because it's the grand finale. It means our beer is done. I don't know, for some reason, I feel like my workspace is a little more cluttered this time. I don't know why. Normally, I feel like I have a pretty good grasp of, you know, having everything nicely organized. And it just doesn't feel that way today. I feel like I'm stretched for space here. So, I, <clears throat> I don't know if I've talked about this before, but I probably have. I like to use uh, different designs and different colors to uh, tell what my beers are because I'm forgetful. And uh, if I don't do that, I won't know what I'm drinking. And I, I'll, I'll have anywhere from six to seven different types of brews <clears throat> in the fridge or bottled. So uh, sometimes I'll, <clears throat> when I, I got a lot going on. If I have three or four fermenters going, uh, I take some little labels and I write on it what brew it is and I'll stick it on the fermenter on the top. Just to, and I'll transfer that and I'll bottle it into the box so I remember what it is. About the easiest way to keep track. Otherwise, I'll be guessing half the time with my memory. A little disappointed that I only got nine out of this probably means it's going to be an excellent beer and I'm going to wish I had more. <laughs> Usually that happens. All right. So we got nine and nine is better than zero. So, uh, and I think this beer is going to turn out really nice. I couldn't really smell it and kind of strange that I didn't really smell it, but that, that doesn't really mean anything. Uh, so we're going to let this age for two weeks. And like I said, it's going back in the box. We're going to put it in a dark area, room temperature around 70 degrees. 
We're gonna let this sit for two weeks. We'll come back, we're gonna open one up and we're gonna try it for you and let you know how it tastes. All right, so we'll see you when it's ready. All right, brewing peeps, we're back. It's been more than two weeks. Our innkeeper ale has conditioned, it has uh, carbonated, fully fermented. Got a feeling it's gonna be a strong beer. Just got that feeling. Uh, got a frosted glass, we're about to pour it in. Let's open it up, see how it turned out. Well, the hiss is a good sign. That's a good start. Nice looking color. Got some suds on the top. Good carbonation. Not overly sudsy, which is good. I don't like a real, real super sudsy beer. Man, I like that color. Nice golden brown. Lots and lots of bubbles. Check it out. Beautiful beer. Looks wonderful. Lots of good carbonation there. Not too much. Another good look. I like the color. Not super clear, but you know, this type of beer is not gonna be. Uh, I mean, it's actually pretty clear considering it's a gallon batch, homemade. It smells good, it smells great. See how it tastes. Wow. Surprisingly smooth. I thought this one would have a little more kick to it. You know, no, very little hops in this one. So, uh, you know, it's an old English ale, so uh, not bad. I, I can't really describe, put a finger on the taste of it. I can definitely taste the alcohol. It's, it's definitely a stronger beer. If I had to guess, six and a half percent, maybe, somewhere around there, six percent, six and a half. Definitely got a, this is one of those that you drink and it's gonna sneak up on you. That's good. Take another look. Beautiful beer. We did it again. Another perfect batch. Gosh, I can't remember last time I had a bad one. Let me knock on some wood here. All right, wonderful. <clears throat> so innkeeper, that's another keeper in my opinion. We'll definitely brew that one again one day. I like the recipe. I, it's a stronger ale, I would say, uh, but smooth, you know, it's, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> I don't really, can't, I can't compare it to anything. I don't have a good comparison. Definitely something different than what I'm used to. But uh, good beer, good smooth beer. Got a lot of kick to it, I can tell. I'll drink this and I'm probably gonna be feeling it. But uh, hit that like button, subscribe, Visit BrewingDaddy.com. Let everybody know about us. We appreciate you, and we'll see you next time. Take care.